Hi everyone, my name is Aspen Dudzik. I'm the Director of Communications at the Alberta Forest Products Association and the host for our new podcast, Forestry Talks. I am so excited to be joined by Mayor Clayton from Grand Prairie. Jackie, how are you? I'm really good. And I'm so happy to finally be able to connect. I've watched a couple of your podcasts and I think oh, it's you. excellent content. I'm looking forward to, to today's discussion. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Me too. So how long have you been mayor in Grand Prairie? Well, I've been elected for almost two years, but I was the interim mayor for 10 months prior to that. Yeah. Our former mayor uh, chose to be the, become the CAO in the town of Jasper. So council appointed me in term for about 10 months leading to the election. And then I was elected in uh, 2021. Great. Yeah, so and you've always I've been, been on council. Grand like, yeah, I've been on council for three terms. My husband and I moved to Grand Prairie in 1999 for five years. Uh, generally, I find Grand Prairie people either went there for five years and never left, or they're from there. So it's, uh, you move to Grand Prairie for five years, you always kind of lose track of time because you're having mm -hmm. such a great time. And then <laughs> before you know it, you're the mayor. And so <laughs> it just Before you know happens. it, look what happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So um, I, I love Grand Prairie. We've had the pleasure of coming up to visit Absolutely. a few times. And I think one of the things that's really unique about Grand Prairie is the concentration of forestry activity there. It's For one sure. of the only places um, in Alberta where we've got four of some of the biggest mills in the world operating there. Can you tell me a little bit about what it's like to live in a forestry community, be a part of it, be the mayor of a yeah, forestry for community? Sure. Well, we're very fortunate in Grand Prairie that we're served by many sectors. Uh, obviously, forestry being a significant one, about 57% of all forestry activity in Alberta happens in our region. Uh, but we're also serviced by energy, uh, agriculture, and then Grand Prairie, the city of Grand Prairie servicing over 300,000 people is truly the hub for retail, uh, professional services, healthcare services. Uh, but having all those sort of sectors of industry, we're very fortunate. Um, our community forestry has been, from the moment you drive in, you recognize mm -hmm. the presence of forestry. And, and so we're very lucky uh, to be served by, as you mentioned, significant players in the industry. And it, it is a, a capital, you know, not the capital forestry, but it's a capital in that yeah. regard. Um, and you see it everywhere you go, whether it's from Canfor, which is really right in the middle of our city Absolutely. or International Paper or Weyerhaeuser or uh, West Fraser on, on, you know, in the MD of Greenview, uh, forestry is a part of our daily life. Mm -hmm. It's excellent to be a mayor of a community that has such a diverse uh, economy. Forestry has been a back in my background growing up for a long time, so I'm very familiar with forest industry, uh, but they're just great. Um, it's a great industry to have in your yeah. community. Tell me a little bit more about that. What's your background and connection? Sure. Forestry? Yeah, I grew up in northwestern BC in a community named Terrace. Uh, uh, it was about, when I lived there, it was about 25,000 people, uh, forestry being the main natural resource. Northwest of, of BC is fortunate that on the coast, Prince Rupert fishing being a, a prime industry, and then in Kitimat with Alcan and, and mm -hmm. Uricon and smelting there, and then in terrace being forestry it really sort of served many sectors but forestry and logging in particular uh, would have been a driving force then um, since then mining's become more prevalent and, mm -hmm. and forestry is still a significant driver but uh, forestry is just some, something we were used to in yeah. our community so yeah so not not a lot of big surprises i guess no and, and my husband uh, works in heavy equipment he's uh, you know with in heavy equipment and sales so when we first met we were living in Kamloops, so we serviced an area there, so familiar with the interior of BC mm -hmm. and, and the logging industry and, and players in that market. Then we moved to, to Grand Prairie driven with a company that was driven by forestry at the time. So been very fortunate. They're really great people. The people in the industry, um, they love what they do. Mm -hmm. They do what they love, and they really just... Uh, are uh, really unique and, and I find a little bit different than industry, other industries, different than agriculture people, different than mm -hmm. energy people. Um, but uh, just really, as I mentioned, it's great to have forestry in your community because they're such great advocates and yeah. strong community partners. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's great to hear. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, something that I've observed that I feel like is so unique about the forest sector is the long-term generational view. And I think it's such an interesting perspective that the forests that we're growing today, they're not for us to enjoy or benefit from, but they're for future generations so the future community and the future families of, of Grand Prairie to enjoy which is so cool yeah for sure I mean forestry has been in the Grand Prairie region for over 50 years mm -hmm. um, and as politicians we're happy to advocate for their needs they're kind of an industry as you know that a little bit flies under the radar mm -hmm. um, the sustainability uh, continues to be a conversation and and my council 
really wanted to, as one of our missions this term, to tell our story better. Mm -hmm. I think it comes with telling industry story better. And so we work uh, in conjunction with all of the industries, but really so people are more aware of what forestry does and that sustainability and what jobs it provides. Um, You know, in our region, about just over $4 billion of GDP is generated. And I think, um, you know, with, as I mentioned, more than half of the forestry activity happening in that region, Mm -hmm. um, it's a 28% of the GDP of the entire province in that sector. So it's, it's a significant player in, in provinces, uh, output, but I also think, uh, they're just really great people. In 2021, Warehouser had a celebration where they planted the 250 millionth mm-hmm. tree, right? How and so those initiatives, that? right? To, yeah. Those initiatives to remove one tree and plant two or three, depending mm-hmm. on on the situation. But I think that those are things that people need to be more aware of, and we need to wave the flag more mm-hmm. for forestry because they are great community partners. You see, whatever partner it is, whether it's International Paper or Warehouser or Camp or whoever it is. Mm-hmm. West Fraser, they they support community events. They're at community events. They support the needs um, in various sectors. They support sport teams and cultural events, and and they really um, just continually fly yeah. along and even peel it, uh, even keel. And and although the market itself fluctuates significantly, mm-hmm. I think that they're just a really solid partner in all communities. Yeah, well, that's so great to hear. Yeah. And we think you're a really solid partner oh, for our industry. You. We certainly appreciate the work that you're doing, and um, I definitely hear. What you're saying, you know, forestry really is just woven into the fabric of, of the community. Absolutely. And sometimes you don't even notice they're there, right? Yeah. I mean, they're just, <laughs> they've been around so long and they do their work so well that unless there becomes, an, you know, when, when they're faced with a challenge such as pine beetle mm-hmm. or, or caribou or different things, you may see them more prevalent in the conversation. But generally, they've just been, you know, they're planning in hundreds of mm-hmm. years, not like other industries that may be planning in 50-year spans. Forestry is planning in hundreds of years span, yeah. as you know. And so... Council this term is really done. We're doing a refresh on our brand for the region and specifically for the Mm -hmm. city, but we want to tell our story better. And with that includes advocating for industry and telling industry stories better because sometimes industry, when they want to tell their story or if they have issues and they come to light, uh, it it may seem self-serving. So if the municipality can support industry in telling their story, it's a win-win because we Mm -hmm. need strong industry for municipalities to be successful. So if elected officials can't tell that story well, they're doing a discredit to the industries. So I think it's a win-win for us to not only tell the great stories of our city, and you know you've been, once you go there, you're blown away. Yeah. You know, and and many people, like I mentioned, live there, move there for a short time and stay. So, I think it's a strong priority and and I know it is a priority for me and I know it's a priority for my council to work with industry to tell the mm-hmm. stories better. Yeah, and 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 talking about um folks living in the Grand Prairie region, we know labor is a big challenge for a lot of industries right now and you talked about jobs being a really big focus. What's great about Grand Prairie? Why why should people want to want to kind of be there, be part of this forestry community and and live and work in GP? Well, Grand Prairie is an uh, a, a unique situation in the sense that it's only 4 hours from Edmonton. We have all the amenities you would need other than say the Edmonton Oilers and if you do <laughs> want to come cheer on the Oilers or you need, do need to go to a professional or a specialist that isn't available in our region, you're relatively yep. close. In regards to amenities and sporting uh, facilities and cultural facilities, we really have it all. We're very fortunate being that region that serves 300 people, whether it's retail services, healthcare services, professional services, we have a little bit of everything. And and the other thing to keep in mind is that our region, in particular in the city, is very affordable to live there. So there's mm-hmm. great paying jobs. The single family um, house price is below the provincial average. And we know Alberta's, uh, you know, on average, quite a bit lower than many of the other provinces. So living in our region is not only affordable, uh, it has great amenities. The people are incredible. I often compare our city to probably the most giving city in Canada. And and, and I mean that in a way of um, per capita of volunteer hours, per capita of Mm -hmm. donations from private individuals and industry. We just really give. We give with our heart. We give with our wallet. And and so with that, we've been afforded the opportunity to host many things. Right now, we're kind of priding ourselves on being a game city. We're hosting the Alberta Winter Games in 2024. Cool. We're hosting the um, the first time Alberta's ever hosted the National Aboriginal Hockey Championship. Oh. So Alberta's never hosted it prior, and we're hosting that in 2024. 2025, we're hosting the special Summer Special Olympics. And mm-hmm. so, you know, really just having cultural... Uh, events and having the opportunity to have such great facilities Mm -hmm. we're just you know open our arms and say come to Grand Prairie you're gonna love it you'll have a great time and we just we're really proud to show off our city 
Yeah, that is so great to hear. Yeah. And um, talking about kind of the giving culture of, of Grand Prairie, I'm not sure if you saw, but uh, International Paper had just recently donated lots of butterfly kits to, to several schools all over Grand Prairie and yeah. the county as well for students to enjoy. So it, it really is something that everybody in the community is participating Absolutely. in. Absolutely. You know, you'll see many examples of that from all the different forestry partners and, and the individual operators and owners mm -hmm. as well, you know, whether it's a, it's a mill or, or, or a production facility or just a small logging company they're really just uh, great giving people mm -hmm. for sure yeah that's awesome and we're really happy to support them and um, one of the things that uh, um, we're working on right now in advocacy to support industry is the community rail advocacy mm -hmm. alliance and I'm it's just uh, yeah that. yeah <laughs> so I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention it I think it's really something that um, started with an Alberta Forest Products uh, op editorial and and speaking with Jason Cripps said, you know, would you would you be willing to sign on to this? And I'm like, absolutely. And I know there's many other mayors that would be as well. Mm -hmm. And it comes back to that when industry tell, talks about concerns with levels of government or with other organizations such as rail companies, it may seem self-serving that, or that it's all about the bottom line. But when a municipality talks about it, it's really the impact that it has in our community. And so the Community Rail Advocacy Alliance right now is about 34 members, mm -hmm. including municipalities, including um, from Central Alberta North, but also the Alberta Wheat and Barley, Alberta Forest Products, and and I think that uh, you know energy sectors are considering, but uh, to come to the table. What I think is important about it is that we're just talking about specific needs of a national yeah. service, and so. When we talk about the main needs of rail, uh, we hear quite often of the discrepancies in service and we hear about, uh, you know, uh, um, an organization may order 100 cars and 80 mm -hmm. show up. And, and so you schedule your product around that. And we know in examples, um, a couple of years ago, international paper had 20% of their products sit on the ground yeah. and go to waste. And, and industry can't afford to do that. And so we talk about the, uh, there's really some small asks, well, small, but a small number of asks that we've been advocating with CN, um, with the federal government mm -hmm. to find solutions for. Um, we're, I'm looking forward to our meeting with CN at the end of August. Um, you know, we finally are being able to get the pe right people in the room and talking about those those really um, significant needs. Um, many people don't realize that there's an auctioning of rail cars. And so if you're a, an industry person that orders 80 cars or 100 cars and 80 show up, you can go to market sometimes and buy those other 20 cars. And so they're, they're, you're pitting industry against industry and it goes mm -hmm. to the highest bidder on a national service. And we all know the wins with rail of getting more trucks off the road, having a greener environment. Mm -hmm. and, and so rail is really a key to the success of not only Alberta, but to the entire country. Uh, we also are advocating for a better collection and, and sharing of data. And I think that that's really comes down to the scheduling of rail cars. And, and recently we've heard that there's been more um, rail cars added to the fleet, which is great. Oh, awesome. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a relatively short term of measure so far. It's about the consistency over time. And so mm -hmm. we're looking forward to working. Our area is primarily served by CN. So we're looking to working with CN and the federal government to find solutions because if our region is successful, Alberta is successful, and when Alberta is successful, Canada is successful. Mm -hmm. And really, that's the goal out of all of this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's really encouraging to hear about some of that work is, is moving along. And I guess fundamentally what the issue is about is that reliability is needed for communities like Grand Prairie that are served by so many different industries. Like absolutely. You mentioned the reliab reliability for their business in order to continue to support a, a flourishing economy in Grand Well, and that's exactly it. it. I mean, if you think we're currently talking about forestry, so when you add the agriculture mm -hmm. um, industry to our, which is a significant region in my area and Absolutely. obviously across all of Alberta, you add that to the equation and then you add energy to the equation, transportation of goods. Um, it's a significant impact on rail and we appreciate that. But um, there needs to be better systems and better consistencies and better delivery. And one of the things we hear quite often from the members of CRAA is about how um, inconsistent winter service. And although I don't consider Grand Prairie very north, um, 
it's still uh, a winter city and, and mm -hmm. Canada is a winter country. And it so is. to have inconsistent season service in the winter is detrimental to all economies so, and all industries. So I think it's, uh, you know, I look forward to the discussions in August with CN. I know that they're on board to find solutions. Mm -hmm. And so working with the federal government and CN, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that we'll find solutions to support not only forestry, but other industries. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's great to hear. Yeah. Well, Mayor Clayton, this has been so fabulous. I really appreciate you making the time to join us in person in Edmonton. I know. As I'm so well. happy to be here. That was great. Is yeah. there anything else that you'd like to add about Grand Prairie and and? Well, uh, I can work? talk forever about Grand yeah. Prairie, so I won't. But I just really I appreciate the work that Alberta Forest Products does in our region. Um, you know, I hear from our members that uh, that are your members, our municipal partners, all the time about the great advocacy work that AFPA does, but. Uh, we're really just happy to be a partner, and I think that that bodes well with other municipalities across Alberta. We hear all the time of the uh, inter-industry sort of communication mm -hmm. and, and how it improves, and municipalities are, are continually trying to find ways to improve. So if you're an industry partner and, and you maybe um, don't have a great relationship with your municipality, I always encourage industry partners to reach out to your mayor, reach out to your council, because having those conversations quite often in the municipal world, as in other industries, you get head down on the, th the item of the day, and it's hard to keep things at a high level. So, mm -hmm. you know, I strive for our council and our organization to be a, a, a stronger partner on a regular basis, uh, but just conversations like this and ongoing ones are the only way that we're gonna be able to share stories and get success, and so, yeah. I'm uh, optimistic of the work that uh, municipalities and industry is doing with AFPA and Alberta Forest, uh, uh, sorry, Alberta Wheat and Barley and, and other energy uh, leading partners. But I think that these conversations are essential. So I thank you for your time. Yeah, no, I, I thank you. I couldn't yeah. agree more. I think the relationship that the forestry industry has with the municipalities in Alberta, especially with folks like yourself, is just instrumental to, to the future of our industry. So really thank, thank you. you for your work. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Forestry Talks, a podcast powered by the Alberta Forest Products Association that explores all things forestry in Alberta. If you're curious to learn more, check out our website, loveabforest.ca. This series is proudly produced by the team at Road 55, Road 55 creates content that connects. For more information, check our website, www.road55.ca.